Well, it's Tuesday and we're, um, we're still messing around with electrics. So we're going to be doing that for a while. Um, last week we talked about parallel circuits and how when we put locomotives on the track, they're going on in parallel, even though it sort of seems like they're going on in a series, the load across the tracks, each load is parallel to the other one relative to the tracks. For that reason, the resistance uh, is going down, therefore the amperage flow is going up. Okay, now let's talk about series. And I said if we put our locomotives on there in a series, it would really be a messed up thing. For one thing, we'd really have to do some weird wiring, running wires between the locomotives and so on. <clears throat> to best understand series, we need to think about those terrible Christmas lights where one burns out and the whole string goes out. Those are in series. So what they're doing is they're taking the line current, say 120 volts, okay? And then they're taking uh, lamps that are rated at, oh, uh, let's say those, those lamps are rated at 12 volts, and then they'll put 10 12 volt lamps but they'll put them in series. And because they've put them in series, each one is dropping the voltage by the, the voltage rating of that lamp. Therefore, each lamp is only seeing 12 volts because there's 10 of them and the current is flowing through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's flowing through all 10 lamps and back to the beginning. But if one of those fails, the circuit is broken and they all go out. Does that make sense? Now it's interesting to note here that because a voltmeter always measures potential, we talked about voltage being potential, mm -hmm. you can place a voltmeter across your voltage source. So in a series circuit like this, if you were to place your meter across one of your light bulbs, it's going to show you how much voltage is present across that light bulb. In the case of what we're talking about here with 12 volt lamps on a 120 volt circuit, any measurement you take across any of those lamps is gonna show 12 volts. Now, it's also uh, interesting to note that a, um, an amp meter, by contrast, measures current. And so the, uh, cur the uh, amp meter, if you were to do the same thing with the amp meter, you won't own that amp meter for very long. If you just put your amp meter across the output of your power supply, hopefully your meter is protected uh, because it'll want to blow the meter to bits because it, has, it needs to be placed in series. So a voltmeter always needs to be placed uh, in parallel with what you're trying to measure across whatever it is you're trying to measure where an amp meter always has to be placed in the circuit in series so that it can measure the amount of amperage that's actually flowing through that circuit. Uh, because when we put a voltmeter across a lamp, um, in this case again it says that we're dropping the voltage by 12 volts we could say that it's reducing, that lamp is reducing the uh, voltage in the circuit by 12 volts because there's the 12 volts right there. And you can measure anywhere across the circuit, anywhere in here, and you can see just how much voltage you're getting, uh, is getting dropped at any point during that ring of light bulbs. So it's like, well, why would we ever use any kind of series wiring um, on our model railroad? And the reality is, of course, we don't very often do that, but I've actually done it uh, a fair amount in the past for different reasons. So, for example, the train station that's uh, up on the logging railroad and it has, uh, has lights inside the building and it has a little um, 
uh, it's a switch lantern, but the, the order board lantern. So they've got the order board that rotates on the depot to tell the train whether or not they have to stop to pick up a passenger. And mounted to the top of that is a switch lantern with green and red lenses in it. So they rotate that around and the green lenses are forward telling the train, no, you don't need to stop. Rotate it around red, you gotta stop. Well, I hooked all that up and it was all glorious and it looked really neat. And I'm using 12 volt lamps um, in, in every situation there. But that meant that my, uh, my little switch lantern up on there was burning way brighter than I wanted it to. And it's like, I'd sure like to reduce the voltage going to that lamp so it's not quite so bright. These are all incandescent. It'd be a different situation with LED. Uh, but I want to bring that one down a little bit. What if I just put a um, resistor in series with that lamp? Then the resistor will drop the voltage by the amount that, that the, the resistance is there relative to the resistance of the light. They're going to split the voltage between the two and that's going to bring it down. Now, rather than whip out my slide rule and try to figure out the math on the whole thing, I just tried a bunch of different resistors until it looked just right. One of those resistors caught fire because sometimes that's what happens. But I found a resistor that gave me exactly what I was looking for and the lamp came down in brightness and the resistor didn't overheat just by putting that load in series. Another time I've uh, done that, <clears throat> is I've got some LEDs that flicker and I like using those for various things but I had uh, a flickering LED and again it was too bright and uh, I thought you know I really like to have this flickering going on uh, in two locations and as long as they're far apart from each other nobody's going to realize that they're flickering in synchronization with each other so I put the flickering LED in series but with an incandescent bulb further up the line and put that in another uh, place. Now I've got this lantern outside my mine that actually has the flickering incandescent bulb in it. And it just lightly flickers. It even kind of calmed down the flickering because the, the uh, incandescent bulb doesn't respond quite as fast as the LED. And I think that looks really nice. Um, so there are times when you want to use something in series that way. Another time, here's, um, here's a little power pack, and I love using these things. They come in all kinds of different voltages. Let me see if I can't get the thing open. Ah, there it goes. Okay, so inside here, it takes uh, AAA batteries. Uh, this might be double, I think it's triple A, double A's, something like that. But if you'll notice, it's, it's a spring and a spring and a spring. Every other one is a spring here and every other one, the spring is up on top. What they're doing is they're putting the batteries in here in series. Okay, if the batteries were in here in parallel, last week we talked about putting power supplies in parallel to get more amperage without increasing the voltage. But because series does the exact opposite of that, by putting the batteries in here in series, the one and a half volt batteries, and there's eight of them in here, produce 12 volts at these leads right here. And what I've been using these 12 volt packs, and these come in one and a half, three, um, five, six, and uh, 12 volts. This one being, of course, a 12. Well, I use a standard connector on here, and then I use that standard connector on all of my structures on the railroad. And all the lamps and LEDs and everything on my railroad are designed to work at 12 volts. That way, if I take a structure off, if I want to test it, I can just hook one of these guys up to it. Or if I want to take it to a show, I can use this as a base underneath the structure, plug my wire into the same connector that I use on every single thing, and bingo, and this has a, a little switch on it as well right here so that I can switch the 12 volts on and off. So there are a lot of times when we do want to use things in a series, not our locomotives, but our lights sometimes. There's a lot of reasons why we might want to 
drop the voltage instead of the, the amperage. So when we put the loads on in parallel, we're increasing the amperage flow. When we put the loads on in series, we're reducing the voltage on the, the circuit. So there are times to do either or. Anyway, if, um, if you're not a subscriber to the channel and you want to follow along on this, this series on electrics, please become a subscriber. And the way to become a subscriber is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Are we ready for that? Zoink, right there, the blue button. Well, I'm not sure how you found this uh, video on the internet. I hope you didn't find it boring. And I'll uh, see you on Sunday uh, as uh, Karen and I do some wonderful messing around on Sunday. <laughs> see you then. Bye-bye.